Hello, this is Anne Margaret. I'm bringing to you love language number two, which is gifts. This happens to be the singles edition of the five love languages by Gary Chapman. Gifts. A little while ago, I visited a widow who had recently moved to an assisted living facility. During our conversation, I asked how she was enjoying her new home. It's a little tight, she said. I had to get rid of most of my furniture. The kids didn't want me to bring that rocking chair, she said, pointing to a chair in the corner. But Marvin gave that to me. I just couldn't part with it. Was Marvin a gift giver? I inquired. Not really, she said. In fact, that's one of the few gifts I remember him giving me. When our first child was born, he bought me that rocking chair. I mentioned that it would be nice to have a rocking chair to nurse the baby. But I was shocked when a week later he walked in with the chair. I nursed both of our babies in that chair. I guess it's like having a little bit of Marvin and the children still with me. I'm glad you clipped the chair. I said, I hope you will keep it forever. Later, as I was leaving, I glanced back at the rocking chair and I knew I was looking at a gift that had communicated love for over 40 years. The gift had even outlived the giver. The meaning of a gift, the right gift. A gift is a tangible object that says, I was thinking about you. I wanted you to have this. I love you. Some gifts only last for a few hours. Many moms will remember the gift, a dandelion picked from the yard and given to her child, given to her by her child. The gift was quickly gone, but the memory has lingered for years. Other gifts, like the rocking chair, endured for a lifetime. The important thing is not the gift, but the emotional love that was communicated by the gift. The right gift is any token, big or small, that speaks this emotional love. The wrong meaning. The Greek word from which we get our English word gift is charis, which means grace or an undeserved gift. A gift by its very nature is not payment for services rendered. When a dating partner says, I will give you, if you will, dot, 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 the partner is not offering a gift, nor is he expressing love. The person is simply striking a deal. A gift is given without strings attached, or it ceases to be a gift. A gift is not a gift when it is given to smooth, ruffled feathers. Some people think that giving a gift will offset the harsh words they have spoken. Some sons were instructed by their fathers, when you've done wrong, always get her flowers. Flowers cover a multitude of sins. After a while, however, girls who receive those flowers regularly just want to throw them in the guy's face. A gift is a gift only when given as a genuine expression of love, not as an effort to cover over past failures. Gifts are visual symbols of love. During most wedding ceremonies, the bride and groom give and receive rings. The person performing the ceremony says these rings are outward and visible signs of an inward and spiritual bond which unite your two hearts in love that has no end. The lonely rings stir deep emotions within the husband. Many divorced individuals can identify with these deep emotions. The gift can be any size, shape, color, or price. It may be purchased, found, or made to the individual whose primary love language is receiving gifts. The cost of the gift won't really matter. If you can afford it, you can purchase a beautiful card for less than $5. If you cannot, you can make one for free. Just go get the paper out of the trash. Learning the language of gifts. But what about the person who says, I'm not a gift giver. I didn't receive many gifts growing up. I never learned how to select gifts. It doesn't come naturally for me. 
Congratulations, you have just made the first discovery of becoming a great lover of people. Love requires effort. Love often requires learning a language you have never spoken. Fortunately, gift giving is one of the easiest love languages to learn. So where do you begin? Listen to the people you care about. Pick up on their interests or the interests of their children. Some people are collectors. Some time ago, I met a lady who had collected over a thousand salt and pepper shakers. Most of them had been given to her by friends who knew of her interest. Bob had a colleague who was a single mom. He heard her mention one day that her 12-year-old son collected baseball cards. He asked her to find out which cards he would like to have. Bob was on a business trip and discovered a card shop near his hotel. In five minutes, he had located a baseball card on his list. After giving it to his associate to take to her son, he said, you would have thought I had just given her a million dollars. It takes time and the conscious choice to listen. For most of us, it also requires making a list of the ideas we hear. Otherwise, we forget them before we find the gift. Nicole used to struggle with what to do for her dad when Father's Day would roll around. A friend asked her what types of shared interests Nicole had with her dad. They both love music. He always wanted to hear about what new songs I'm listening to. Nicole decided to give her dad a CD filled with songs she loved. She included a long note with the track listing and what each song meant to her. After her dad received the CD, he told her he listens to it every day during his commute and loves every song. Now for every Father's Day, Nicole gives her dad a new CD and he adores them. He gets a glimpse into Nicole's world and the music is something that can share together. People speak about what interests them and what needs they have. If we begin to listen carefully, we will pick up all kinds of clues as to what would be an appropriate gift for the people we care about. Be sensitive to the nature of some gifts. In a dating relationship, you must also be sensitive to the way your partner responds to gifts. Because of their cost or perceived meaning, certain types of gifts may not be readily acceptable, accepted sorry, by the one you love. At a singles conference in the mountains of North Carolina, Josh approached me after a lecture on the five love languages with a perplexing question. I believe in all five love languages. But what if you try to speak a love language and your dating partner is not willing to accept it? Could you give me an example I requested? Well, I've been dating this girl for three months. I'm really excited about her. Samantha's the most wonderful person I've ever met. I wanted her to know how much I cared about her. So I bought her a really expensive gift. But when I gave it to her, she said, I cannot accept this. I just don't feel right about it. I was devastated, he said. I still don't understand, he continued. I really wanted her to have it. I think I know why she'd rejected the gift, I said, but I'm not sure you will want to hear it. Oh, I want to hear it, he said. I really do. Okay. I said, here's my guess. I think the two of you have different ideas about the current level of your relationship. It is obvious to me that you are very interested in Samantha. You said she is the most wonderful girl you have ever met. The fact that you would buy her such an expensive gift indicates how deeply you feel about her. Josh was nodding his head in affirmation, so I continued. The problem is that Samantha views the relationship differently. She obviously has an interest in the relationship or she would not be dating you, but she is not as far along as you. In her mind, it is too early in the relationship to be receiving such expensive gifts. She doesn't want to give you the wrong impression. She doesn't feel that the relationship has reached the level where she would feel comfortable in receiving such a gift as an expression of your love. Therefore, you must accept this and respect her wishes. 
There was a long pause, and then Josh said, you're right. I don't want to hear that, but I think you're right. I love her so much, and I wanted to do something really nice for her, but I guess I'll have to give it more time and hope that she will come to love me as much as I love her. I nodded and said, six months from now, when Christmas rolls around, you might test the waters before you purchase the gift. You could say something like this. I want to do something really nice for you this holiday, but I don't want to surprise you. Would you be willing to accept, insert name of the gift, as an expression of my love for you? No strings attached. I just want you to know that I love you. If she says yes, you will know the relationship has matured. If she says no, then the relationship is in trouble. Gifts and money. If you are to become an effective gift giver, you may have to change your attitude about money. Each of us has an individualized perception of the purpose of money, and we have various emotions associated with spending it. If you have a spending orientation, you will feel good about yourself when you are spending money. If you have a saving and investment perspective, you feel good about yourself when you are saving money and investing it wisely. Suppose you are a saver. Your emotions will resist the idea of spending money as an expression of love. I don't purchase things for myself. Why should I purchase things for others? But that attitude fails to understand the truth that you are purchasing things for yourself. By saving and investing money, you are purchasing self-worth and emotional security. You are caring for your own emotional needs in the way you handle money. If you discover that someone you care about has a primary love language of receiving gifts, then perhaps you will understand that purchasing and giving gifts to him or her is the best investment you can make. You're investing in your relationship and filling the other person's emotional love tank. Love money and single parents. Remember, the purpose of a gift is to emotionally communicate, I love you. I hope this gift will enhance your life. This is extremely important for single parents and really all parents to remember. Recognizing gifts as someone's primary language. For some people, receiving gifts is their primary love language. It is what makes them feel loved most deeply. A single parent dad who picks up a stone while hiking a mountain trail and gives it to his 10 year old son might discover it in his dresser drawer when the son is 23 years old if the boy's primary love language is receiving gifts. The gift said, Daddy was thinking of me. Every time he sees the stone, he thinks of his father and feels loved. Gifts not need be expensive after all. It's the thought that counts. But I remind you, it is not the thought left in your head that counts. It is the gift that came out of the thought that communicates emotional love. Now I will speak actually in my own circumstance. I had uh, quite a few gifts given to me and though very much appreciated when Mr. Chapman talks about when it's to <laughs> settle ruffled feathers, that was the absolute worst. I would personally tie in flowers with um, not such great thoughts that I detested receiving flowers and occasionally a piece of jewelry I would look at the piece and it would remind me of the argument instead of reminding me of a moment of joy or happiness or of celebration but it literally would bring back that moment of whatever discord was going on in my personal life all right so back to the book Things to think about. 
To what degree was the love language of gifts spoken by your parents to you and to each other? Number two, how often do you give gifts to those you love and care for? Three, what is the last gift you gave and to whom did you give it? Four, do you find speaking the love language of gifts difficult or does it come naturally for you? And then why? Five, in your conversation with others, do you consciously listen for gift ideas? Would keeping a gift list in your notebook be helpful for you? Six, if you enjoy receiving gifts, from whom would you most like to receive one? Would it be appropriate for you to give this person a gift this week? Signing off for now. Play it again. Gifts, as a reminder, do not need to be expensive. I find ones that are created from the heart, if it's somebody's love language, it is going to mean the most. Just as Mr. Chapman spoke about the rock picked up on a hiking trail and that the son still had in his drawer years later. So take care for now and until next time.